How's it going everyone? It's Harvey from Mother Sponge 5000 and I hope you guys are having a great day as of course we're going to talk about the Atlantic hurricane season more specifically three areas I'm watching right um right now. So if we were to take a look right around the western Atlantic we of course see the remnants of tropical storm Philippe. It still has a wind the maximum wind speed that's um equivalent to tropical storm strength but it isn't considered a tropical entity anymore. Of course the cooler air mass located in the higher latitudes pretty much has taken over this storm and this storm isn't necessarily um strengthening off of um tropical processes anymore so this hat is now considered an extra tropical cyclone however despite this it's expected to strengthen as it continues ahead further northward with its wind field expanding and potentially its max wind speed as well as it approaches the atlantic canada coast and the coast of maine and take a look at the overall composition of tropical or the remnants of tropical storm Philippe, we do see it's it's very reminiscent of a regular mid latitude low we We'd see in the mid latitudes where we see the dry air in training the southern side with all the moisture located on the northern um, portions of this storm system and you and based on the satellite imagery you'd probably assume that the lo the main low pressure system or what's left of Philip is located right here however that's not the case at least just yet the eye is still um, believe it or not right over this area and it's going to take some time before the main center of circulation of Philippe jumps over to this main low pressure system and once and once um, the two low pressure systems combine and this cooler and dry air mass you see right here um, interacts with this storm system then that's when we should see shedding to where the middle bar pressure could jump down to the 970s before landfall now um, focusing on our next tropical disturbance in the main development region, we do have this tropical wave just coming off the West African coast right now. And we do see the thunder showers are very isolated. Of course, at least for right now, it doesn't really look that conducive for a tropical cyclone to develop. We're going to need to see a lot more convection that's consolidated before I can confidently say it'll have a good chance of developing in the near future. However, it seems like the computer models are believing that this will develop eventually into a tropical storm. And the National Hurricane Center believes that more likely than not we will see at the very least tropical development out of this tropical wave and the good news is that the computer models want to take this far northward which i'll go into more detail a little bit later but um moving on to the western caribbean and the gulf of mexico we um, the, um i've been talking to you guys about over the past several weeks of the possibility of a tropical cyclone developing in the gulf of mexico and now from the two most reliable computer models the gfs and the european model they have been showing a trend where they want to develop a well defined low pressure system in the gulf of mexico let me show you guys that right now First, taking a look at the latest run of the GFS model, if we were to continue to move forward, we're going to see that thanks to weakness in ridging right over Central America, we're going to see all this moisture located over Central America as well as the Eastern Pacific move northward towards the Gulf of Mexico, and that could allow for just enough convective activity for tropical cyclone development to occur. And it will also help that we're going to see um, the remnants of Philippe linger around Atlantic Canada for quite some time thanks to a negative tilt in the jet stream, which means that it's going to bring a strong northerly flow or northwesterly flow for the entirety of the United States and this and um, this strong wind flow should move as far south as the Gulf of Mexico so all the moisture you see right over the eastern Pacific as well as Central America will move further eastward over the Gulf of Mexico and along with the cool and stable air mass associated with the strong northwesterly flow that's um, that'll enhance the instability for all this convective activity to where maybe we could see a tropical cyclone develop out of this it might not necessarily be entirely a tropical entity but at the very least it could still bring a heavy amount of rainfall right over the southeast where you could experience flooding rains out of this right around the wednesday to thursday time frame where we do see especially on the gulf coast that's where you experience the worst of rainfall and we do see a well-defined low pressure system develop just off the southeast coast however i definitely wouldn't be surprised if we see tropical cyclone development even earlier than that if we see a little bit more instability than the gfs model anticipates let me show you guys the 500 millibar height anomaly and um we and you're gonna see that 
Um, this low, this low, I apologize. I keep pressing the same one. Okay, here it is. So you're going to see that this, um, that the remnants of Philippe will linger around over Eastern Canada for quite some time. Here's Philippe makes landfall anywhere between Atlantic Canada and Maine. And this storm system becomes quite powerful because we see, um, a negative tilt in the jet stream where instability is maximized and a negative tilt also slows down storm systems because we have a temporary area where the winds are coming from the east which means that this storm would move a little bit further westward before eventually moving towards west like it should which means that this low pressure system will stay over this area bring a strong northwesterly flow that will bring much cooler than average temperatures over the united states but more importantly enhance the instability right over the gulf of mexico and like i said since we're seeing a pretty um large weakness and ridging over um mexico all this moisture right over um right over the eastern pacific will move into the gulf of mexico and that's when we could see just enough convective activity along with the instability associated with the strong northwesterly flow for tropical cyclone to development to occur however there's still things we're going to need to consider before we can assume that we're going to see a tropical storm over the gulf of mexico so of course the instability will play a big role the more instability we'll see the more convective activity we'll see which means that tropical cyclone development would be more possible it'll likely be considered subtropical but it will have it will have characteristics that will feel a lot like a tropical storm so the, right around the southeast you need to pay close attention to this and whether this develops or not i will say confidently that southeast will likely experience very heavy rain associated with whatever this entity ever um um whatever it um ends up being so you need to be aware of that possibility right up, up along the gulf coast and we do see also the remnants of this eastern pacific hurricane making landfall over mexico will provide the gulf of mexico with more energy so we're definitely going to need to see the sh um, how strong this storm will be over eastern canada because that will determine the northwesterly flow that will determine the amount of cold air that moves to the southward and that will determine the amount of instability that will determine the amount of convective activity you'll see so it's pretty much a big domino effect just and it all really starts from this um, storm that's going to make landfall right over uh, Maine. So we're definitely going to need to pay close attention to the strength of Philippe um, once it enters Canada. But I'll, keep got, I'll certainly keep you guys updated, but you should prepare for heavy rainfall regardless of whether this develops or not. Now, the European model is also showing a similar um, forecast, very strong low pressure system parked right over eastern canada bringing um very cool temperatures to the united states as well as the gulf of mexico um and stronger winds um and the gf and the european model also does expect uh an enhanced area of convective activity moving into the southeast a little bit further southward um the position of this low will be key the first southward it moves and more likely um, this entity will move a little bit further southward, um, maybe impacting more so Florida rather than the areas further northward in the southeast. Um, so we're definitely going to pay close attention to the position of that. Um, but be prepared for heavy rainfall in general, whether the European model is correct or the GFS model. Now focusing real quick back on Tropical Storm Philippe or what's left of it so there isn't really much to talk about pretty much everything has been said with this storm system at this point it's certain at this point it's gonna make landfall somewhere in between the border of maine and um atlantic canada but regardless of where it makes landfall the margin of error isn't going to be big enough to where these areas will um will avoid the impact so in maine and atlantic canada you need to be prepared for the possibility of power outages wind gusts over 70 miles per hour especially right up along the coast and make sure to be prepared for a heavy amount of flooding the no a lot areas in the northeast are already oversaturated by the new the, by the various um, rainstorms that have moved through over the past several months and Philippe will only add on to that with potentially up to five inches of rain so you need to be prepared for that possibility as a storm will strengthen because like I said once this chop moves through plenty of cold air will filter in to the 
um, warm core of this storm system and that cooler denser air will enhance wind speed because the air the warm core um, is so warm and lightly dense to a point where this cool air right behind this low is going to want to filter in at a very quick pace which will enhance the wind speed force the lightly dense air to rise and as the cool air enters the low pressure system it will heat up once again and cre just create this endless cycle of convective activity as well as lift around the center circulation for this storm system to continue to intensify despite the cooler sea surface temperatures a little bit further northward so definitely um, pay very close attention to this over New England and expect anywhere from two to three inches of rain and three to five um, in localized areas. Now, moving on to our next potential disturbance over the main development region. Um, so here is our next disturbance and um, what, well, let me go a little bit further. So here is our next disturbance that we've been keeping close eye on. The European model we do see, while it does expect a decent amount of moisture to surround the eastern half of this storm system the storm system is very lopsided and there isn't necessarily enough convective activity to where the lift is high enough for the wind speed to increase along the surface and so we're so over the next 24 to 48 hours the amount of convective activity this attains will be key in determining the future of the storm system of course the more convective activity um we're gonna see the more likely it's gonna develop not only into a tropical storm but potentially a hurricane in the main development region so pay close attention to how much more convective activity we'll see um with this disturbance because i think that will be the biggest key in determining the strength of this now the good news is is that both of the two most reliable computer models want to take this out to sea as it expects a strong or at least a lack of ridging just north of this storm and it is expected because we are under a negative north atlantic oscillation right now the troughing is dominating the northern latitude so this will most likely move out to sea i don't expect there to be any ridging to steer this towards the caribbean which is certainly good news and hopefully it stays that way and i think it will it seems like both the computer models are agreeing on that scenario and this pattern seems very persistent on the lack of ridging right over the northern atlantic as we do see the gfs model a lot more aggressive in developing a tropical storm but eventually it also weakens it thanks to the dry air a little bit further northward also the wind shear of course greatly increases a little bit further northward before it just moves out to sea not really doing much of anything which is certainly good news so i don't think we'll have to worry about this much but I'll keep you guys updated if any significant changes occur with this disturbance. The National Hurricane Center is giving this disturbance a 60% chance of tropical cyclone formation over the next 7 days. It should happen in the more long term future and I do expect this chance to rise. Um, it seems like the computer models are persistent that a tropical, at least some sort of tropical storm will form even if it's weak there's going to be enough convective activity so i'll say the chance is more likely than not we're going to see tropical storm sean in the main development region and like i've been showing you over the past several videos here's a quick look at the global tropics hazards outlook and we do see much of the same thing um, there's still the possibility of tropical cyclone development over the western caribbean and gulf of mexico and the chance only increases for the week ending october 24th so even if this next disturbance that we're keeping an eye on in the near future doesn't necessarily um come for fruition i could easily see especially with the much warmer than average sea surf temperatures as we're seeing a tropical storm develop somewhere around this area so by the time we approach um the mid to late october time frame you're definitely gonna need to keep your eyes peeled over the gulf of mexico and the caribbean so here's a projected path of post-tropical cyclone Philippe as it's expected to make landfall, like I said, somewhere um, in between Maine and Atlantic Canada, most likely along the coast of Maine. So definitely prepare for impacts. And we do see the strongest of the winds are located on the eastern side. However, I do expect the wind field to expand a little bit more the more of the um we're gonna see stronger winds on the western side once we see the storm intensify so even in the areas a little bit further westward pay attention to gusty winds 
And here's the amount of rainfall you should expect anywhere between two to four inches of rain, especially in the higher elevations, uh, maybe around one to two inches of rain in localized areas. Uh, um, right around southern, um, right around the southern upstate portion, and maybe even extend as far south as New York City, which is definitely the last thing New York City wants after the historic flooding event that just occurred. But thankfully, it likely won't be that much. But be aware potentially of that possibility um, of maybe a slight possibility of flash flooding, but I think it's very low. But you always at least want to keep that in the back of your mind because you never know. Here's a look at the GFS Unsolved members. And the Unsolved members are pretty much showing what you'd expect for post-tropical cyclone Philippe. However, um, the good news is that uh, most of the Unsolved members do want to ship this storm a little bit further, um, take a turn further northward. Let me actually go even more into the long-term future towards the 240 hour mark. Yeah, unanimous agreement that this would move out to sea, not really coming close to the Caribbean. And hopefully it stays that way. Um, and I do believe that is the most likely scenario. And in the Gulf of Mexico, it's always good to keep in watch. We do have several and some members wanting to develop a tropical storm. So keep that in mind. The European Unsolved members are also in high agreement that um, with the GFS model takes potential tropical storm Sean out to sea. So I do believe this is the most likely scenario at this time. But that's it for now, guys. I thank you guys for watching and make sure to subscribe if you enjoy more. Um, if you want to see more weather related content and like if you do enjoy um, this video.